if your baby has a thrush infection and you are breastfeeding, there's a good chance that then you will have a yeast infection. A yeast infection hurts a lot. In this video, let's talk about the symptoms, the causes, the treatment, and prevention. But first, hello, my name is Valerie. I blog at babywisemom.com and I have been blogging there since the year 2007. I have four children who currently range in age from 12 to 19 years old. I had three children who had thrush when they were breastfeeding, some of them more than once, so I have been through it many times, so let's get into it. First, let's talk about the symptoms of thrush in your baby. If your baby has thrush, your baby will most likely have some white patches inside of their mouth. It can be on their gums, on the inside of their cheeks, it can also be on the roof of their mouth. So if you suspect there's some thrush, like lift their lips, and, you know, pull, check inside and see if you can tell if you see any of those white patches. And those patches, they're usually white, they can be kind of yellowish, but so you're just looking for these like patches in your baby's mouth. You might also find that the corners of your baby's mouth are cracked and your baby might have a diaper rash that won't go away. So you think it's a diaper rash, but it's really like a yeast infection. So, but you'll be like, oh, my baby has a diaper rash and you'll be treating it and it just will not go away. So if that is happening, it could be thrush. And your baby might also be fussy. Not all babies are fussy when they have thrush, but it can be really uncomfortable. So if your baby's uncomfortable and fussy, then it could be thrush, especially, you know, combined with these other symptoms we just talked about. Something to note is that newborns will often get like white on their tongue after they eat, like milk tongue. So if you think there may be thrush, but then you're like, I see some white on the tongue, but maybe that's just milk tongue. You can try just like wiping it away and see if it goes away or not. If it does come off with the tongue bleeds, then that can be thrush. If it doesn't come off at all, then it is probably thrush. If it comes off and there's no problems, then it's probably just milk tongue. So next, let's talk about the symptoms that you will have as the mom if you are breastfeeding. Now, if you are breastfeeding and your baby has thrush, then you will get it too. Like In all likelihood, you will also get it. So for me, the first symptom was always really bright red nipples. And then also just like super sensitive all of a sudden. And then like that feeling moves from just being sensitive to like this burning sensation. And like the burning just spreads everywhere. It starts, it's in the milk ducts. And so it is just like, just feels on fire everywhere. And if you're at that point, when you're at the burning sensation, you will feel like shooting pains while your baby eats. If it continues without treatment, then your nipples will start to crack and bleed. And this isn't like the first time you ever nurse a baby or like the first time you're nursing that baby, if you're a little more sensitive. Like, it's not just that kind of crack and bleed. It's like crack and bleed, fully split, and just blood. It is really unpleasant. You also might get a rash on the skin of your breast, like your baby gets on their bottom. You might have a rash like that. So we're looking at red nipples, sore nipples, being itchy in all that area. The skin can be really dry and flaky, burning in that area, and sharp shooting pain. It really is not comfortable. So with my second child, that's the first one who had thrush. And, you know, we started out just fine. Like with my first baby, I had the normal like pain that comes from being first time breastfeeder and all of that, like toughening up and all of that. Um, but my first two children are pretty close in age. And so it hadn't been that long since I nursed when I had my second baby and um, things started out just fine. It was totally fine for a, like a month. Um, minimal pain, like nothing major, no issues. It was all quite good. And then I got this pain and it was intense and it got more and more intense. And at first I thought, oh, this is just like the needing to get used to breastfeeding pain. I'd been there, done that. And so I just assumed that's what was happening, but the pain got worse and worse. And then I thought, this doesn't make sense. Like why would it be pain-free for a month and then start hurting? And so that's when I started looking into it and realized oh, she has thrush. So that's what you're looking for. Let's talk about what causes thrush in your baby. 
So thrush is just a yeast infection. So that really, that could start in you, that could start in your baby. And through the breastfeeding process, you can pass it on to each other. Some babies pick up a yeast infection while being birthed. They pick it up in the birth canal. Also babies who are younger than 37 weeks gestation when born have a risk of picking that up. This also can be it's really common if one of you was on antibiotics, which really can happen after a birth. Like mom might go on antibiotics, baby might go on antibiotics. So if a one of you has gone on antibiotics, then that increases your risk of a yeast infection. And so that, you know, if one of you has been on antibiotics or is on antibiotics, you want to be on extra alert and watch for a thrush infection. And then of course, thrush yeast just thrives in warm, dark areas, especially when they are moist. So diaper area, your breasts, that can really be an issue when you're breastfeeding. Your baby's mouth is Makes sense that that's where it really becomes a problem. This also can be caused by diabetes, certain birth control pills, or just it could be from someone else in the home who has it, who has spread it somewhere else. So if you suspect that you or your baby have a yeast infection, then you want to speak to both of your doctors, unless one of the doctors is able to help both of you. You need to see both doctors because so long as you both have it, it can be spread back and forth. So if you just treat baby, but you don't treat yourself, then you can pass it on to baby even once baby gets rid of it. So you both have to be able to eradicate this infection. And so you probably will need to see both doctors. In all of the times that I had this, I once spoke to somebody, I can't remember what the circumstance was, but I spoke to someone who said, oh no, you don't need to be treated if your baby has thrush. But I knew better because I'd been through it a lot. And so I knew like, oh no, I definitely, definitely need to. Um, so make sure, like even if someone says to you like, oh no, you don't both need to be treated. Yeah, you do both need to be treated. Make sure you speak to your doctor and your baby's doctor and get that taken care of. There are a lot of different types of medications and protocols that people follow. And so it's probably wise to do a little bit of research and kind of see what is working for people. Um, this is where like mom groups can be really helpful because not all doctors know all the different protocols. And so you may be able to bring one up that has worked for someone else. So if you have like a Facebook group you love or you know, a mom group somewhere else where you can ask questions like that. And you may get some great advice there. My statin is a drug that is very commonly turned to for yeast infections. That is drops for your baby and like a cream for mom. That's usually like the one that's turned to first. Um, for all of the infections I faced with all of my babies, my statin alone did not do it. We had to do more than that. Of course, things that help fight yeast are always a good idea. Like Probiotics are really helpful if you are having yeast issues. Genation Violet is another popular remedy. I've never used that one, but that's a popular one. I really found Diflucan to be like it. That was it for me. That's what worked best. And there are different protocols that are followed by different doctors. Like I, for me, it was best if we took like a very aggressive approach with Diflucan, where you start with higher dosage and then wean back over after a couple of days. So like for me, I took, it was a pill, like Diflucan pill. I used Nystatin cream. My babies use Nystatin. And I also love Newman's nipple cream. This is a prescription cream and it has like an antifungal in it. Also has a painkiller in it and also has a steroid in it. So it just kind of, it helps fight it. It helps you like heal faster and it just helps a lot. You also want to be aware of your diet and how that may be affecting yeast. So like yeast thrives on sugar, so it's good to cut sugars out. Uh, it can be really helpful to add yogurt, again, without probiotics. Although some people find dairy just hurts the whole situation. So while yogurt has probiotics, it may hurt more than it helps. And so you may just turn to something like acidophilus or some other probiotic to be able to get that without adding the dairy. You also need to be aware that yeast just spreads really easily. So you need to be very cautious of, and, and, and cognizant of what you are touching, what your baby's mouth is touching, and make sure you're washing your hands, make sure you're washing, you know, if your baby has a pacifier, um, any kind of anything you're using, 
for breastfeeding, like make sure everything is clean and you're not continuing to spread the yeast more. It's also good after each feeding to do a vinegar water mixture and just wipe your breast clean to clean off any yeast that may be there. You can also soak your nipples in like a saline wash with a vinegar water mixture, like one to one ratio to help clean and, and soothe. Also want to make sure you're keeping your nursing pads really dry and fresh. Like I know they can, it all, it's all expensive. Like everything adds up, but you need to be keeping those dry and changing out so that you're not allowing the yeast to thrive in a moist environment. And then make sure you're washing your clothes and your nursing bra regularly. So if you ever pump, you really need to wash all of those pump parts really well so that you don't have yeast living or staying on those pump parts and then spreading it later. So we've kind of talked about how to like different things get that can help prevent the yeast, but let's also talk about like how to prevent it from getting really bad. Because from my experience, as I knew what it was, if I stopped it soon, then it wasn't so bad. So really be aware of the signs, like don't let it get so bad because once you let it get so bad, it takes a longer time to get rid of the yeast. If you catch it early, then it's much easier to kill. So if either of you have been on antibiotics, like watch carefully for the signs because that's really when it often comes in. I always hated going on antibiotics, my baby going on antibiotics when I was breastfeeding after I had it with my second baby because I just knew like, oh great, here we go. Like it's going to come. And so be aware of all those signs and symptoms so that after you've had an antibiotic, you catch it quickly if it does come. And just make sure you're keeping things as dry as possible. Dry things out like before you cover them up, like after you feed or after you shower, like let your breasts dry out before you cover them back up. And make sure you're keeping things really clean. This helps prevent, it also helps treat, but it helps prevent. And as I said, keep those nursing pads dry and fresh, change them out as frequently as you need to so they're not wet at all. And keep your hands clean, like wash those hands really well, wash all the stuff that's touching mouths and everything really well. And also like treat your cracked nipples so that you're not letting like bacteria and other stuff pass into those wounds. So even if you don't have like infection going on yet, just make sure you're treating those cracked nipples to help them heal and not be open wounds. It's also really good to note that freezing does not kill yeast. So if you pump milk while your baby has a yeast infection, if you use that milk in the future, you'll be reintroducing that yeast. So just, you know, if you're using frozen milk that you've had when you had an infection, watch out for that yeast. All right, that wraps it up. Now, always remember to be an advocate for yourself and for your baby. If you feel like something is wrong, it's okay to like really push. You don't, sometimes I had to push even after I had experience with it and I knew what was happening. There were times I had to be like, no, there's definitely something wrong. We need to be seen. This needs to be treated. So like always trust yourself. And if something is wrong, take care of it so that you can both heal and be healthy and have a positive experience breastfeeding. As always, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and I will answer. And thanks for watching and have a great day.